Today we're going to be taking a look at rationalizing a numerator. This is going to become a very important um, algebra skill for when you move into calculus because when you solve limits, uh, rationalizing a numerator is going to be a very helpful skill. Um, but in, in this we are just going to be focusing on the actual algebra skill of rationalizing a numerator. You should be familiar with the concept because you rationalize the denominator a lot in an Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 class. Um, so for this first example here, we're going to be looking at um, uh, the square root of x plus 1 minus 1 all over x. All right, and it's this numerator that we're going to want to rationalize. Now we're going to do it the exact same way that you rationalize the denominator. You are going to multiply by the conjugate. Now just a little review there of why we choose to do this. Um, in this numerator, we've got a minus sign. All right, and it, if the one thing you remember about a conjugate is you have to switch the sign to the opposite sign, all right, you are on the right track. All right, we do this to force what's called difference of two squares. When we take the difference of two squares, like a squared minus b squared, and we factor that, that factors into the square root of whatever a is, the square root of whatever b is, so a plus b times a minus b. So what we're doing when we multiply by the conjugate, we're taking the opposite sign. So this binomial quantity would be this a minus b right here. We want the opposite binomial with a plus sign in there so that when we multiply these two things back out we get that difference two squares. Alright, so then in this first example here then that means I'm going to want to multiply by the square root of x plus 1 plus 1 over the square root of x plus 1 plus 1. All right, it's form of one, so I'm not altering anything. All right, now what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to multiply um, that numerator out very, very quickly because all I know, I know, I just have to square the first one, put a minus sign down, and square the second term. So when I square these um, two right here, multiplying two things identical underneath the square root will just leave me with what's underneath the square root. So I'll have an x plus one. All right, I know it's going to be a minus because of my formula, and then I square the second term. One times one is just going to give me a one. All right, now on that bottom, I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm going to leave the x there, and then times the quantity of the square root of x plus one, all right, and then plus one. I do not want to get in a big hurry here to multiply that out because hopefully things are going to cross out nicely for us. Okay, now on this, one minus one, that does go away very, very nicely there. All right, let's go ahead and rewrite so we can see the crossing out a little bit better. That's going to leave me with an x in the top. That x, which I did not distribute, is sitting real nicely outside, which then is going to allow me to cross it out, leaving me with a 1 there on the numerator. So rewriting this so that it's a nice answer, 1 over the square root of x plus 1 plus 1 as a final <clears throat> simplified answer for rationalizing that numerator. All right, same concept. Let's come over here and look at this one. Uh, if I want to rationalize the numerator, I'm going to take this and multiply by the conjugate, which would be the opposite sign there in the middle. So I need to multiply by the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x. And I do it over itself so that I have a form of 1 there. Okay, now simplifying on the top, all right, I'm going to use this formula here. I know that if I square that first one, all right, squaring my radicals, that'll leave me with just an x plus h. I'm going to put a minus sign down. And then squaring the second one, square root of x times square root of x is going to leave me with an x. All right, again, I'm not going to foil that denominator out because hopefully something's going to cross out. Minus square root of x. All right, now on the top real quickly, I can see that x minus x is going to cross the x's out. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite so that we see the h's up there in the numerator. And then h times the quantity of square root of x plus h minus the square root of x. All right, now you can see that those x's are crossing out, or those h's are crossing out, which will leave me with a final answer of 1 over square root of x plus h my square root of x. All right, now it appears as though every time you're going to get an answer with a 1 in top, and that is not necessarily always the case. All right, let's do one more example that gives you something that does not come out with a 1 in the numerator. Because I don't want you to think that every time you rationalize a numerator, that's going to happen. All right, multiplying by this conjugate on this one, I'm going to be multiplying by the square root of x minus 2. Square root of x minus 2. All right, now if we FOIL that out, or in other words, square the first term with a minus and square the second one, 
square root of x times square root of x will give me an x. All right, 2 squared is going to give me a 4 with a minus sign there in the middle. All right, now on this bottom, I am going to leave it to begin with. All right, now looking at this, in the past we've always had something fall out, something cross out. This one did not, and it doesn't have to. All right, so in which case, in this one, you can go ahead and distribute that, and you're just not going to hurt anything. You could leave an answer like that. Let's go or. You could go ahead and distribute that bottom since nothing crossed out. Square root of x times square root of x will give me an x minus 2 square root of x. All right, so in this case, since nothing crossed out, you could probably leave it as either one. All right, if you like the video, go ahead and give me a like on this. Thanks.